how to install a pull-out kitchen faucet featuring Touch 2.0 technology. The goal of this video is to walk you through installing your kitchen pull-out faucet with an integrated handle featuring Touch 2.0 technology. We will be using the faucet design shown here, although your faucet may look different since designs and finishes will vary. As with any faucet installation, check to make sure everything is in the box using the Quick Start Guide and the Maintenance and Installation Guide for reference. Before you begin, you'll want to assemble the tools you'll need for the job, like two adjustable wrenches, safety goggles, a Phillips screwdriver, and you may want to have a flashlight handy to help you see under the sink. You may also need silicone if the surface of your counter or sink is uneven. The first step is installing the faucet body. The instructions for this step vary depending upon whether you have a top mount or under mount sink. The top mount sink has a rim around the sink and has been set in on top of the counter. The mounting for an under mount sink is not visible from above the counter and does not have a rim around the sink. This video will walk you through an under mount installation. For top mount installation instructions, Refer to the Quick Start Guide or the Maintenance and Installation Guide. Now let's get started. For this step, you'll need the packet marked with the number 1, the faucet body, gasket, escutcheon undercover plate, and the escutcheon from the box. You will only need the escutcheon gasket, undercover plate, and escutcheon if you are using the escutcheon to cover additional holes in your sink. For three-hole installations, you will need the escutcheon undercover plate and the escutcheon gasket. Peel the white backing off of the escutcheon gasket and insert the sticky side into the groove on the escutcheon undercover plate. Press down on the gasket so that it seats or fits snugly all the way around. Now place the finished escutcheon onto the assembled undercover plate and set both onto the mounting surface. To mount the faucet body to the sink, feed the supply lines, the orange solenoid connection wire, and the black LED wire through the hole in the sink. Place the faucet body on the sink, making sure that the LED light is facing forward. If you're using the escutcheon plate, ensure that the faucet body is correctly aligned onto the escutcheon. If the surface of the sink is rough or uneven, use a little silicone on the gasket to help seal gaps. Once you've set the faucet body in place, it's time to mount it securely. Take the mounting gasket and isolation ring from packet 1 and thread them over the supply lines and wires. Then slide the gasket and ring over the shank with the gasket closest to the sink and the flat side of the isolation ring against the gasket. Thread the gasket and isolation ring to the top of the shank. Look above the sink to check that your faucet body and the LED light on the base are facing forward on the sink. Then place one of the screws from packet 1 into one of the holes on the isolation ring. Tighten with a Phillips screwdriver. Repeat with the second screw. If you're using the escutcheon plate, thread the two additional black rings onto the escutcheon shanks with the flat sides toward the sink. Hand tighten until they are secure against the sink. Next, we'll install the hose and spray wand. For this step, you'll need the hose, spray wand, hose weight, and hose guide. First, screw the threaded fitting of the hose into the spray wand to prevent the hose from being pulled all the way into the spout. Then, insert the plastic hose guide onto the end of the hose. Feed the hose through the spout until the spray wand docks into place. Even though the hose guide helps to keep the hose from getting hung up inside the spout, it may take you a few tries to feed the hose through. The next step is installing the electronics. 
For the first part of this step, you will need packet number two from the box, as well as the solenoid valve. You'll use the other part shown for step 2B. Insert the black hose adapter into the top of the solenoid valve. Then secure in place with the metal clip. It is very important to install the metal clip correctly. Installing the clip upside down will not provide a tight connection and can cause leaks. Make certain that the clip slides into the grooves on the black hose adapter. Under the sink, insert the outlet tube into the top of the solenoid valve, making sure it fits snugly. Then flip up the clip of the hose adapter to secure it in place. Slide the hose weight onto the hose. Remove the hose guide and push the hose end onto the solenoid assembly outlet. Attach the plastic clip to cover the connection, securing the hose to the solenoid. Pull down to make sure the connection is secure. The next step is to make the wiring connections. For this step, you'll need the battery box and batteries. To begin, make sure you have dissipated any static charge by touching the cold stop or another ground. In order to ensure proper touch 2 functionality of the wand, braid the orange and black wires several times. Next, take the orange wire hanging from the shank and insert it into the end of the orange wire connected to the solenoid valve. Then remove the protective plastic cap from the LED wire that is hanging from the shank. Plug the LED wire into the solenoid assembly. All electrical connections must be made before the batteries are loaded. With batteries in place within the box, connect the wire from the solenoid to the top of the battery box. Place the battery pack flat on the cabinet floor at least two inches from the cabinet walls and other objects. If your battery pack doesn't reach the floor, you can set it on a non-metallic object at least two inches from the cabinet walls. The next step is to connect the water lines. For this step, you will need packet four from the box and two adjustable wrenches. Remove the check valves and ferrules from the bag and install these onto the supply stops. If ferrules and nuts are already present on the stops, remove them and use the ones provided with the faucet. The check valves and ferrules that ship with your faucet are essential for the faucet to operate properly. Then, starting with the hot water, insert the ferrule into the hot water stop. Screw on the check valve by hand tightening. Next, take the adjustable wrench and make one full turn to finish tightening the check valves into place. It is very important to ensure the connection is tight, but do not over tighten the check valves. Now, do the same for the cold water stop. Look at the ends of the hot and cold water lines and check that all fittings and end connections are free of debris. Attach the cold water line, blue, to the cold check valve using the metal nut. Hand tighten the nut to a snug position. Then give it another full turn with a wrench. You'll want to hold the nut in place on the check valve while you are tightening the nut from the supply line. When installing the water lines, you may need to loop any extra length as shown. Delta Faucet Company strongly recommends against cutting the supply lines, as doing so introduces a potential leak point. If your project requires cut lines, see the Maintenance and Installation Guide for Custom Fit Connection Instructions. Attach the hot water lines, red, to the hot check valve. Again, hand tighten the nut to a snug position, then give it another full turn with a wrench. Do not use pipe dope or other sealants on water line connections. The last step in installation is to flush the lines. It's now time to turn the water on. Place the spout over the sink before turning on the hot and cold water stops and turn the handle to the off position. 
turn on both hot and cold water supplies. Next, pull the sprayer away from the spout and unscrew the spray head. Pull the end of the hose down into the sink. Be sure to grip the hose firmly so it doesn't slip out of your hand and retract into the spout. Next, put the handle in the full-on mixed position. Then flush water lines for about one minute. This will drain the spout hose to flush away any debris. Turn off the water. Replace the spray head by hand tightening it onto the end of the hose until it fits snugly. Turn on the water to make sure the connection is tight and no water is coming out of the connection of the sprayer to the hose. Redock the sprayer and turn off the water. Now check under the sink to make sure nothing will interfere with the electrical connections or with the motion of the hose when the sprayer is pulled out of the spout. Then check the connections to the solenoid and the connections at the stops for any leaks. Retighten if necessary, but don't over tighten. Once the faucet is installed, it's time to test it. Use the handle to turn the faucet on and off, then leave it in the on position. Tap the spout to turn it off and on electronically. You'll need to use a deliberate touch, like playing a piano. Touching too fast or too slow will not produce the desired results. Grasp and rotate the spout. Touch 2O technology is smart enough to know the difference between a grasp and a touch and will not change the function of the water when you grasp the spout to move it. Test the stream, high flow stream, and spray modes of the sprayer as well. With proper installation, your pull-out kitchen faucet featuring Touch 2O technology will bring years of stylish, efficient, trouble-free water delivery. If you experience any difficulty, please call 1-800-345-DELTA for assistance or visit deltafaucet.com slash touch for more information for your faucet. Delta Touch 2O technology. Another way Delta is more than just a faucet. See what Delta can do.